بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق أجمعين صادق الأمين شفيعنا يوم الدين Dear students Today إن شاء الله تعالى uh, We are going to uh, finish the aspects of the novel by uh, E.M. Forrester in the course as you know the rise of the novel In the previous session you remember we had some aspects discussing, explaining, and today we should finish the, the rest of these aspects or elements of the room. Related to the views, to the opinion or perspective of E.M. Frusta. We talked about E.M. Frusta a little since he is a great novelist. At the same time, a great writer or essayist he made several lectures in Cambridge, uh, mentioning his views from his experience as a novelist, as a learner also. Okay, and also uh, you remember that we give a short introduction of the aspects of the novel, which were uh, lectures collected later on on a book, as you understand. Then. I remember that I asked you to make a, a little presentation, small presentation or short presentation about the author biography, about a interest to take ideas, information, data from uh, the book uploaded, aspects of the novel, and also from any other source you can get. Uh, you know, we talked also about English literature, focusing mostly on uh, English novel, uh, British novel or American novel. Since we speak about what international uh, literature, in general, particularly uh, the novel. In the summary of his lectures, we realized that uh, he had made seven elements, seven aspects or points. Okay, introduction to introduce his views, then A. E. Presta dealt with the story, okay, connecting the story as an very interesting or important or significant element uh, related to, to the novel in particular. The next aspect or element is what is the characters or a character. Okay, to what degree, to what extent character or characters are what are important or significant in, in the room. After the characters, we uh, went through the uh, concept of plot. What is plot? How can it be uh, done, composed in an open? Later on, we uh, dealt with pattern and rhythm. And we speak, we spoke about the, the, these two elements or uh, aspects in comparison with what with poetry since they are uh, mostly related to poetry here you remember the uh, short conclusion for summing up his ideas today we need to go further dealing with some important points as i mentioned before uh, the rest of the aspect is divided into key figures, let's say key literary figures. Literary figures means novelists, important okay, writers, right? In fact, as you know, there are hundreds of good novelists in English novel, okay, English or the international novel. But in this session, since it is somehow short, we need to focus on some important novelists. Those who has paved the way for the uh, later novelists, starting with what with Daniel Debu. Daniel Debu. Okay. And especially Daniel Debu, we need to focus more on him as a writer, okay, as a novelist, 
since we are going to study one of his novels in this semester, in this course. The novel is called Robinson Crusoe. And the Robinson Crusoe, as you know, is a very famous novel, not in, in, in Britain, not in America, but universal. So who is Daniel Deacon? As you read with me, within the ideas, we have little uh, ideas about the person, his production, and the views of what of uh, E. M. Proster about the person and on his works or novels. Okay, we can say that Daniel Deacon was born in 1660 and uh, died in uh, 1731. Okay, and he was an English novelist and journalist. Besides being a novelist, he, also, uh, he is also a journalist, or he was a journalist to write in journals, essays, critical essays, or similar like that. And he is the novel, the novelist, for what for some important novels such as Robinson Crusoe, Okay, and Mon Flanders. So very short. First, uh, discusses Mon Flanders as an example of a novel in which the plot and the story are subordinate to the main character. Okay, here are what the views, the views of uh, A.M. Prosta. I already, I already said, and I always say, these are perspectives, opinions, experience. Sometimes we agree with if they are accepted. Sometimes we can what we can uh, refuse or put them uh, on, on a sort of debate. Forrester states that what interested the was the heroine, the main character, the heroine, and the form of his book, the form of the novel. Book here refers to the novel. The, of his book proceeds naturally out of her character. Her character referring to what? To Mel Flanders, the heroine, the main character. So this is a fact, I mean, it is uh, sufficient, not sufficient to speak about Daniel Debo, the novelist, okay, who wrote two great novelists, Nobel sorry, okay, Robinson Crusoe and Will Flanders. Daniel Debo, I mean, deserve to be written about him, books, books to be written about him. Going to the second uh, K figure or literary figure or novelist is Jane Austen, Lady Jane Austen. Here we know that she was born in 1775 and died in 1817 and was an English novelist who Works, whose works depicting the British middle class. Okay, so it is an important point that Jane Austen in her writings deals with what with, with social elements connected or related to middle class people, middle class British people. Okay, and this concept or aspect is a landmark in what in the development of modern novel. We can say that Jane Austen has greatly contributed to the to the growth to the development of English novel. She she contributed okay greatly to the uh, revival of what you call 19th century English novel. Okay, she is best known for the novels. She wrote some novels like what like Sense and Sensibility. Look to the date. Pride and Prejudice. Here also, Mansfield Park. Emma, okay, and persuasion. All these, uh, some of the great uh, novelists of the 19th century, social novels written by Jane Austen. The idea of hard novels with first start, what can we get drawing example from both Emma and persuasion? First start notes that all of the characters in Austen's novel are what are round. And you remember what you had mentioned about round when we spoke about the character round and flat, flat and round characters. So round means active, appealing, okay, has a great role, he or she has great role in what in the society or in the uh, uh, what you call action of the novel. 
The next one is Henry Dunting. Who was Henry Dunting? Okay. Okay. What is the ideas mentioned by Proustian about him? Like, so he was a British writer. He is a British writer, considered to be one of the inventors of English novel. In our way, we can see he is the father. He's, uh, he is one of the. Huh? He is one of the fathers of what of uh, English novels. His best known works include some novels like what like Joseph Andrews, Tom Jones, and many others. I mean, he is what great novelist. Of course, we know that. First up, mentions Fielding as a novelist who successfully creates round characters. So first up, supports uh, the idea that the characters of uh, Fielding is what is round. It means they are what they are appealing. They are active. Okay. They have great rules okay, within the, the action of the novels. In a discussion of point, point of view, Forrester criticizes Fielding. And I, I'd like to remind you about criticizing that the word criticizing should have two directions. Parallel directions, mentioning, showing, presenting positives and negatives. If there are positives to be shown, if there are uh, negatives to be assessed. Okay, for first time, uh, criticizes Felding for his intrusive narrative voice. It is one of the ideas that uh, for, uh, first time's emphasis on Felding, which is no better than Parom uh, chattiness. It is an opinion, anyway. It is an opinion. Sometimes we agree if the argument is accepted. Maybe it is returned to him. So, barroom ch uh, chattiness that it deflates the narrative uh, tension. I don't think so. But it is just what, uh, okay, uh, idea from expert. In a discussion of fantasy, Forrester mentions Joseph Andrews as an example of a portrait attempt at parody. Okay, parody, if you remember what we mentioned previously about glossary and figures of speech, so parody is an important, what you call glossary. In novel, in drama, even in poetry. Okay, sometimes we need to, to correct events by mentioning indirect what you call indirect way. He explains that Felding started out with the intention of parodying the novel Pamela by Samuel Lucharsa, but through invention of his own round characters. Why not? Pardon me making, okay, what you call comparison, but this comparison has touched elements, dimensions, why not? Okay, so it is what we appreciated. Showing that what we call the uh, cleverness, skillfulness of a poem of Henry Ford. Okay, ended up writing a completely original work. After mentioning some negative points, he mentioned uh, some, okay, good points, writing a complete original work. Here is the idea when we deal with criticism, we have to be fair, okay? Being fair is necessary for what for any critic. Moving to the next one, Oliver Goldsmith. Who is Oliver Goldsmith? And the ideas of Frister about him and his works can be uh, read in this short paragraph. So he was born in 1730 and died in 1774, short time he lived there. He is an English novelist, essayist, playwright, and also a poet. Okay, look how many, what we call, uh, professions. He is uh, what we call skilled in. For Goldsmith, is a novelist, yes, because we are dealing with novel. Essayist, he writes essays, he's a writer, a critic, also a playwright writing drama, as well as what a poet writing poems. To find a person like that, what can we say? We can say 
can we say that he is the master of fire? Okay. The three different, the master of five, five trades, and he is he is a master of all of them. Not like the maxim or proverb says, master of all trades, a master of seven trades, the jack of seven trades, and master of none. No, yes, I remember that now. But for Goldsmith, yeah, he's a master of all these five because he achieved. Okay great production in all these genres of literature. Likewise, including the nobles, the, okay, the car of uh, Wheatfield, an essay collection called the Citizen of the World, or Letters from a Chinese philosopher, a poem called The Deserted Village, okay, a play, she stoops to conquer. And don't forget the dates, okay? The dates are clear, don't forget them, the uh, dates of production or of publishing these works. Going to the views of Frusta, in a discussion of plot, Frusta describes the Picard of Wheatfields as a novel in which the formulation of the ending comes at expense of the story and characters. Sometimes it happens that, yeah, he focused mostly on the plot and uh, little did not pay great attention to the story or to the characters it happens but within that we should realize that okay the great writer novelist dramatist or a poet okay, can compensate this aspect with that so it can be natural okay. referring to goldsmith as a, a lightweight Forrester notes that in the Baker of Wheatfield, as in many novels, the plot is clever trish at the beginning, positive, and yet worst in an uh, epicile by the ending, even with this, even with, with what with negative point. But we have positive also, compensation, balance, bringing his this and that. Okay, yeah. Something like that. So going to the next one, somewhere in Richardson. Richardson was born in 1689, died in 1761. Is an English novelist, credited with inventing the epistolary novel, in which the story is narrated through a series of letters between the characters, making the plot as what as a sort of messages between characters. His major works are Pamela and Clarissa. Okay, in a discussion of parody, we remember again parody, eh? this is what you call irony, comparison, uh, mentioning this point to mean something else indirectly, bringing something, okay, ex uh, not explicit, implicit, Okay. Two refer to explicit point of view. So in a discussion of parody and adaptation, Frusta mentions Pamela as the work that Henry Fielding set out to parody in his novel, Joseph Andrews. What prevents? What prevents? In my opinion, uh, this points refer to what or refers to skillfulness cleverness, ingenuity of what? Of the writer, of the novelist. Next one is Sir Walter Scott. Who is he? What production he has uh, done or achieved? And the perspectives of Frister about him and his works can be uh, okay, read in this very short paragraph. Born, was born in 1771 died in 1832, definitely, this is, I mean, crucial things, repeated. Is a Scottish novelist created with what with the invention of the historical novel. Ivano is the best known for his many novels and novel circles, cycles, sorry, cycles, in a discussion of storytelling in the novel, Trista, 
uses the example of that pride of Lamiru and of the antiquary, the last of a trilogy set in Scotland okay, from 1740 until 1800, known as the okay, Waverly nobles, Waverly because of wave, yeah? they, 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 they make a wave like Waver. Okay, look to the sea and the waves of the sea, if they are strong, they cannot, they can sweep what is in front of them, the waves. So they are called what? Waverly nobles, since they are what? Strong in their dimensions. First, again, although admitting that he does not consider Scott a god novelist, he is free. No one can stop him. Thus, concede that he is a god storyteller. Yeah. No problem. Storyteller, because what? Because of the historical, what historical uh, elements he is using. To the extent that he is able to narrate a sequence of events that occur over time. Again, this is a positive point, not negative. Even if it is for first time to be a negative, but in my idea, it, it can be what it can be positive. First in concludes, however, that the result of Scott's uh, perfunctory storytelling is a shallow and unemotional work lacking the qualities which lend value to a novel. It's a poor opinion. Again, debatable, debatable. The last uh, literary, what you call, key figure of uh, the novel is Lawrence Stern. Can be Stern. Yeah. Stern as, as a family name, we are not sure. Is it Stern? Or it's turning. can be can be that no problem. I mean the the sound for such a concept because it is not familiar to be used. We can uh, leave it not to focus on it. Lawrence Stern was born in 1713, died in 1768. Is an Irish English writer whose masterpiece is the novel. Tristram Shandy, okay, produced between 1759 and 1767. Sometimes, you know, a writer can write a novel in one year. Some other writers, they can write a novel in several years. Here is one of them, an example. In which he narrated, uh, the Christian dominates the storyline. Again, perspective. In a discussion of fantasy and Prophecy, you remember that we mentioned about prophecy, prophecy and fantasy connected with imagination, even with, with myth and legend. But this is what this is the events available in the mind of the writer. What about the uh, critic, like what uh, uh, Frostar has mentioned? So Frostar mentions, mentions that Stern among a number of novelists in whose works both fantasy and prophecy are essential. So even if the, uh, what we call the works of uh, Stern are fanciful, they are what they are essential. Now it is what we call a fear judgment on the person. The third part of the aspects goes with what with the themes. Okay, you know the meaning of theme and also According to Frista, what are the subtopics connected or related uh, to the themes in the novel or the novels of the uh, 16th century, 17th century, until 20th century? The first point is what is the literary critic? Literary critic. We have critic, but not any critic, a critic, analysis, uh, okay, a reviewer, essayist. dealing with what with literature. And what kind of literature? What genre of literature? No. Forster makes comments about his position as a literary critic. So we know that he is a great person, a great literary critic as well as novelist. With respect to literature throughout his lecture series, 
Okay, covered. His comments on his own critical methods occasionally makes reference to, uh, to claims made by other critics and sometimes cast doubt on the role of the critic in the field of literature. This is natural. Even for the nobles of the Star, one of the greatest nobles is uh, a passage to India, faced many uh, kinds or sorts of what of criticism. So against what? Against and with the Star. Why? Since those points of what of the critics and the art literary critics, okay, they are various. Okay, the, the, the sort of thinking, the sort of understanding of a situation might be diverse, might be different, not should be the same, or should not be the same. For the purpose of his discussion, Prusta rejects traditional approaches to literary criticism that focus on tracing historical development and the impact of previous order on later authors in his introduction. Personally, I don't agree with, with this point. That tradition, okay, is an important element to, to the present and to future. If we speak about tradition, but we should not forget what kind of tradition. Is it essential with great purpose, with great uh, help to the society? Yes. If it is the opposite, yeah, might be not accepted. So, Forrester also brings up T.S. Eliot's ideas of tradition, okay, in which the critic's job is to uphold the best aspects of literary tradition. Why not? Yes, this is correct. Now, there is what you call controversy. To go with and to go against. To go against first and to go with it. After realizing that uh, ideas of T.S. Eliot in his traditions, and it's say. <coughs> <clears throat> an essay on literature, especially drama, okay, and poetry. So first of all, dismisses this as being impossible right away, right away. Nonetheless, he does concern, nonetheless, he does concur with Eliot that a critic must view literature as a whole rather than as it may be limited by the restrictions of the chronological timeline. Yeah. I totally agree with T.S. Eliot more than the ideas of E. Interest. Okay, but let's finish. First, our mix sporadic references to various literary critics throughout the text, usually to offer a uh, reputation. Why reputation? Reputation should be what should be on what on an argument. This argument should be accepted by the mind and also by what? By the concept of literature. Okay, these are some ideas to deal with what with the concept of what the subtopic tone or literary critic, let's say, literary critic as, as we call the, uh, one of the themes according to uh, Ian Forster. Next point is reading as a theme in, in the novel. Since the novel is what is written more than acted or performed, in his series of lectures on the book, book means novel, as I mentioned, Forrester discusses both the novel's analysis and what he believes are the demand the book makes of its audience. According to him, a reader must be intelligent and have a good memory in order to appreciate a plot. You remember what we have mentioned about appreciation? Okay. There should be before that, there should be what we call understanding. Okay, yeah, for what for a reader, with what with intelligence, with cleverness, 
with grasp of mind, thoughtful mind. So first, first up, explains that while a reader's uh, curiosity may be what picks, because again he explains what that while a reader's curiosity may be what picks their interest in the story. This quality of a reader is in and of itself quite simple and dull. To agree with simple and not to agree with dull. Dull means boring. No. Simple means direct. If we say that it is dull, it means there is something hidden and understood. Here is the idea which first I wanted to, to tell about. Against what? Against the reader. And what kind of a reader? The reader must, however, be intelligent in order to understand. Yeah. So don't forget, understand and appreciate. First, understand what? Understand. Yeah. So don't forget, understand and appreciate. First, understand what? The plot. He knew that while curiosity is the trait that enables the reader to be interested in a particular details. Yeah. Intelligence enables the reader to appreciate the air of mystery that is woven throughout the story, enabling him or her, the reader, any reader, to consider the connections between details. Well, so let's go back. Understanding and appreciate. As I always say, if you need to appreciate, you have to understand. There is no appreciation without understanding. And this is my law and my belief. For any person, the reader, and like you, learner, okay, if you need to appreciate something, to test it, to appreciate its tests, either touchable or abstract, you have to understand it. Okay. Here is the meaning, here is the point, here is the aspect of what? Of reading or the reader. Okay, the other ideas are what? Completing his point of view. Going to the next point, universality. What does that mean for first? We know that universal is the international or global, but connected it with the noble. What does that mean or what does it imply for what for first? Rostra mentions the concept of the universe as the most significant part of the novel, the book of the novel, in his examinations of prophecy. So, if there is a question to ask about his beliefs, Rostra's beliefs, okay, about the concept of the universe, it is what most significant part of the novel. Although not necessarily in reference to a particular creed or religion, the universal, as first uses the term, the universal could also be understood as the spiritual. In the broadest sense of the word, like that, in the broadest sense of the word, in its wide meaning, or simply as it is understood. According to first time, the universal can refer to particular religion or spiritual practices as well as strong human emotions like love and hate. Yeah, for this one, it is covered. It goes to the mind and hers directly. These are important points. So what, what other ideas we can deal with? What would the universe, the universal, the universe or universal as an Chuktipati is using it as what as a now, first of observes that the universal component of a story may be expressed explicitly or subtly or subtly hinted at this, that, or that, those. Right, it can be. First of contrasts sections from George Eliot's, George Eliot, a novelist, 
not T S Eliot. Okay. The Nobel Adam Speed and uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky, the brothers Karama Karamazov. Yeah. What for? What reason? To show what the means by the prophetic. Prophetic means something imaginary, mysterious. Okay. Dostoevsky's subtle and indirect allusion to the Christian spirituality succeeds in being prophetic, whereas Eliot's Church Eliot, overt, not covered, overt, and direct allusion to religions comes off as a heavy handed sermon. Look to the vocabulary, to the idioms, terms used here, how great they are. The author notes despite the fact that both authors are from a religious background and both wish to express the idea of salvation as inspired in the sinner by love and pity. Yes. This point is sufficient, I think, to deal with what with the universe, universality. Going to the next point of view, which is called style. Style is very, very necessary in, okay, in writing. And it is what you call natural differences in writing among what? Among those key figures, among those who are novelists to write. Everyone is different from the other. In what? In his style, in her style of writing. Dealing with the first point, according to uh, Forster, the first point related to style in novels is tone and structure. Tone, the intonation, the manner of events, through language, of course, huh? and structure. So they are what connected with what with the with the language and structure. The fact that aspects of the novel is a printed version of a series of lectures originally written and delivered verbally by the author before an audience of college and university students and professors in Cambridge. Okay, what is the result? Forster's alma mater in the name of the prestigious clerk lecture series plays a major role in determining the narrative tone narrative tone so the tone is what narrated we speak about tone okay tone and structure this tone is narrated narrative means connected with what with the novel it is uh, even if it is poetic but it is narrative or voice of the work the republished lectures or opening editors know notes that the lecture's tone is informal Neat formal, informal means casual as as everyday language, everyday speech. Not formal as academic or classic. Even convers conversational. Okay, connected with what conversation? Conversational. As a result of this casual, chatty tone, Forrester's voice is very intimate throughout his collection of lectures and on the surface seems to make unexpected digressions or contain numerous aside or yeah numerous asides that one may or might not find in a work that was initially just mean for what for the printed pages ideas are ambiguous sometimes but they are what of great or let's say significant elements to express the mind of the lecturer, the imposter. Okay. Connected with what? With the tool, with the structure, as a style in writing novels. Nonetheless, Forster's talk is not in the least bit choitic or spontaneous in its overall structure. Each lecture instead of chapter 
each lecture yeah present a distinct stance on each of the seven characteristics of the book of the book means the novel hmm? that first time is interested in throughout or through a carefully designed series of points showing the greatness of the of the writer the greatness of the lecturer the greatness of what of the novelist and the critic novelist and critic and essayist a e. imposter next point is analogy we mentioned that about analogy comparison but sometimes yeah we need to understand the analogy through what through differences so it is a comparison okay here a way of style in writing a way of style in writing like tone and like structure so it is what a literary device known as analogy is a comparison drawn between a more abstract original and complicated thought or idea and a concrete or familiar or easy understood object or concept for what for the sake of clarification and the purpose is to it to make something clear clarification and explanation people need to understand there, should, there must be there might might be interpretation for what for understanding there should be clarification for what for understanding okay so through what this this uh, i mean uh, way of doing through analogy through comparison as we mentioned here so uh, between a more abstract original complicated thought or idea and concrete abstract and concrete original or familiar or easy understood object or concept for the purpose of understanding for the sake of understanding first are you see the concept of all authors from throughout history writing concurrently side by side in a large circular chamber circular what we say room similar to the British Museum library here we have what we call abstract idea as the primary comparison to begin and end aspects of the movement yeah starting and ending his what his uh, lectures his book as if in comparison as if in making one similar to the other at the same time they are different not the same not similar even but using what using analogy to compare for for the purpose of what of making something clearer for example if you need to not to mention a lady for example and you need to show or to express the beauty of the lady what can you say you can say oh look the moon is walking the moon is walking like that. abstract and concrete abstract and referring to something for what for expressing idea making the idea clear you don't want to say directly that point by using this parallel, first demonstrates or shows his claim that all authors adhere to the same fundamental creative principles. And that both novels and the novelist, both of them, huh, that the writer and the written work are unaffected by differences in culture and history. It depends. Maybe, maybe not. By using this broad analogy, Forrestar makes it obvious that he is more interested in the novel's universal aspects than in its historical evolution or regional diversity when discussing it. It's okay. We can say he is free to, to, what, to believe in universality more than regional. So again, all these are elements, aspects, telling what? Telling the perspective of this person, the mind of this person, the thought of this person. Who is this person? 
هي انفرست ده اللي هو فلس انت الشايز انت الكريتيك A key infrastructure can analyze the works of authors who lived and worked in various ages. If we stop here for a, a, a while, various ages means various uh, novelists, means various novels without what without similarity, but also there can be similarity also. Okay, and continents, uh, continents, and show the similarities. as well as contrast. Yes, is what I mean by using the analogy of writers or writers yeah, working side by side. So, or consequently, he spends substantial amount of the introduction juxtaposing passages from, from authors as disparate as some are Richardson's from the 18th century and Henry James from the early 20th century or a novel from the 60s of the, of the 19th century by Charles Dickens, and a novel from, from the 20s of the, of the 20th century by Wells, H.G. Wells. This is clear. I mean, this point is clearer about what, about universality, about this point. To illustrate his thesis, his idea, final idea, or argument that history evolves, art sits stagnant. Do you believe in that? Think about it. First, uh, use the example of novelist work, working side by side. First, uh, revisits this comparison. So, revisits here, it means that he has to think again and again, come back to it again and again, Through what through thinking. In his last chapter, to me, predictions, philosophies, thoughts, his thoughts about the novel's future, the novel's future, Bob May's novel, future course. He says that because the machinery of the human mind has largely remained the same throughout history. Sometimes I can I can get what confused with what with the truths of him. He goes against and he goes with. To finish it, we must imagine the authors of the next 200 years as also writing in the same room. Okay, how can we believe in that? Thinking that or imagining or believing, I know to say, believing that. All novelists, they write on the same, on the same issues, okay, as if they are in the same room from what, from 200 years until today. Here is the end of this, what you call, just flashes about aspects of the novel by A. M. Frusta. I hope that they are somehow clear. I uh, request you to read again, read again, try to configure the terms, the vocabulary, the ideas, go deeper, understanding between the lines, not only the lines, okay? Meet you, inshallah, in the next session, starting dealing with the first point uh, of what of the novel we are going to deal with, the broken secrets by Daniel Deepen, one of the greatest novels in, what, in its evolution, in its starting. See you then. Wishing you all the best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa baraka.